All right, thank you for watching this project help video for lesson five. I will help you answer each question in the project by providing step-by-step -step instructions using example problems. A good strategy might be to pause the video after each example and then work the corresponding problem in your project. All right, so question one. We have an expression here, the expression 40H plus 15, that represents a car's distance from a crime scene when spotted by police. What is the meaning of the 40, the H, and the 15? All right, so really, if you notice from, um, you'll see uh, later on and when you get to lesson two, that this is the, represents the equation of a line, right? So we're trying to figure out what it could mean as far as this car's distance from a crime scene. So remember, this expression represents its distance from the crime scene. So the H here is probably how long the car has been traveling, because obviously the longer the car is traveling, the farther away it's going to be. All right, and then this 15 out here is going to represent, if it's a, remember this thing represents the distance away from a crime scene, some initial value. So the initial value would be how far away the car was from the crime initially when it was spotted by the police. All right, so if I had to describe this one, I'd say that 40 here, well, think if this is the number of hours, if H is the hours that the car's been traveling or the time that the car's been traveling. So maybe this means like time and hours. This 40 then would represent how fast the car was going. So like suppose you're traveling for three hours at 40 miles an hour. Then 40 times three would mean you've gotten 120 miles. All right, so that's what the, this is the context of in distance. So we know that 40 must mean the speed of the vehicle. And if this time is really hours, then this probably, and we don't know what the 40 is though. It could be miles, it could be kilometers. It doesn't tell us, all right? But we know that it is gonna be some kind of speed. And then the 15 out here, the 15 at the end, what we call the constant term, that's going to be the initial distance from the crime scene, right? Or when it was first spotted. Initial distance away. And again, it it could be a miles, but it doesn't say in this problem, so it could be kilometers. Let's just for argument's sake, say it's miles. Then the 40 would be the speed in miles per hour. The time H would be the time in hours. And 15 would be that he started away 15 miles away from the crime scene, or he was 15 miles away when he was first spotted by police. All right, so now question two takes that exact same expression, and they just want you to use some vocabulary to define what each of these values represent, what term we use to describe them in math. All right, and notice the 40 is in front of H. So the H here, that's our unknown. You know, that's the, uh, the quantity that can change. So that is definitely our variable. All right, so that's the variable. The number that's being multiplied by the variable, right, we call that the coefficient. So this is just some math terms for you. E-N-T. All right, and this 15, right, it doesn't depend on a variable, right? So this value here, this is called a term, right? Because it's a together that's separated by pluses and minuses. This term right here has a variable in it. All right, so this, the value of this term would depend on whatever H was. You know, if, I, if H was 3, it would be 120. If H was 4, it would be 160, right? So it, it depends on what H is. But this 15 doesn't depend on a variable, right? It's just always 15. So that's why in math we call a number at the end of an expression like this. We just call that the constant. 
it's constantly 15. Okay? It's never going to change from that. All right, so question three. So suppose the robber stole $51 bills, and he also stole some $5 bills, some $20 bills, and some $100 bills. Write an expression that could represent the amount of money that was stolen. All right, so we want to we wanna write something that would allow us to figure out how much total dollars there were stolen. All right, well, we know that there's $51 bills stolen, so I can start with that. There's 50. And now we're going to add that to the $5 bills. The question is, should I write 5? Just 5? Because if I write just 5, that means I have just one $5 bill. Because remember, we're writing an expression that represents the total amount of dollars. All right, so since these are $5 bills, if I really wanted to know how many dollars that was, I'd have to know how many five dollar bills that are were right if i have three dollar five dollar bills then it's fifteen dollars but if i had ten five dollar bills right then that would be fifty dollars so since we don't know how many bills were stolen how many five dollar bills were stolen i need to make a variable for it so um, maybe i'll call it for five dollar bills we'll call that one x all right, so now to calculate the amount of money that is, I would take five, right? Because they're each each bill is worth five dollars, and then we'd multiply it by however many bills were stolen. So, like the like I said, if ten five dollar bills were stolen, then five times ten would be fifty dollars. There, we're going to do the like for the rest of these terms as well. I'll change colors here. So, so the next thing we know that the thief stole some twenties. We just don't know how many twenties. All right, so again, now now we need to make uh, a variable for the 20. Notice you might be tempted to write 20 because there's our $20 X. But remember, X represents the number of $5 bills stolen. So if I use an X here and an X here, it means the same exact number of $5 bills were stolen as $20 bills. And that's not indicated by the problem. All right, so it's not 20 X. So since we don't know, I'm going to have to create another variable then to represent the, uh, the $20 bill stolen, the number of $20 bills stolen. So we'll call that Y. So if I knew the number of $20 bills stolen, I would just multiply it by 20, and that's how many dollars there would be there. All right, so now you can see what we're doing. We're going to have to do that one more time with the $100 bills. I'll make those green. All right, so we have to... We'll have to make another variable to represent the number of $100 bills stolen. So how about I use Z? And each $100 bill, each bill is worth $100, clearly. So it's 100 multiplied by the number of $100 bills that would have, would have been stolen, which we don't know, so I'll call it Z. And then here, now we've written an expression that could be used to figure out the total number of dollars stolen. It's okay if I switch the terms around, say if I have the 50 at the end here. All right, so question four. Given this equation, so I made up an equation here, right, derive the formula for K. You know, that's another way of saying, hey, let's get K isolated all by itself or solve this equation for K. All right, so in the problem that's like this in the project, um, many students are able to get K by itself, but only after they substitute X and Y in this case with numbers. And then they try to calculate the number and then divide. So this problem really doesn't want you to do that, right? It wants you to solve what we call a literal equation, meaning I'm just going to rearrange the equation to isolate K. And then whatever k is equal to is going to involve p and all these other variables. So we're not going to get an answer for this like 12 or 15. All right, we're going to get a variable expression. All right, so the way I like to think about this is when we have parentheses, so excuse me, parentheses like this, right, that's one big block. If you are solving this and you're doing the order of operations, all right, what you would do here is you would figure out what all of this was, right? And then, then it turned out to be a single number. And then to get K by itself, you would divide both sides by that number. 
Well, we don't have a number, but whatever this is, we can divide both sides of the equation by that entire expression. Think of it as a block. So like, what if this whole thing here inside the parentheses turned out to be 50? So you would have something like this. Well, to get k by itself, wouldn't you just divide the both sides by 50? Right, so yes, you would. But now instead of the 50, instead of writing the 50 there, let's write what, where it came from. Let's write all of that instead. That's how we write a literal equation. So in this case, if I wanted to get the k by itself here, k is equal to, I need to divide both sides of this equation by, in this case, the whole quantity 2x plus y. So let me write out each step here. And it's really only one step. I say each step, but there's only one step to do. All right, since now we can think of this entire thing as a block, a group, right? I can divide both sides by it. You know, so if you like the idea with the numbers, me equating it to numbers, it'd be like here, dividing by the 2x plus y. Remember, that's just like dividing by the both sides by the 50. I can do that. And then on the right-hand side here, those cancel, right? Because we have dividing by the same thing. That's how we get k by itself. So now k is all by itself. We can say that k is equal to, here's the expression right here, p divided by 2x plus y. And that's how you can work that problem in on lesson four, question four. Now you might have to type it when you're typing it in on the computer like this. Notice how I put parentheses around what's in the denominator of the fraction. If I didn't, I might think the y is being added out here after the fraction and not in the denominator. All right, so the last question here, it says, describe a real-world context that can be represented by, and I give this expression involving two variables and a constant, right? What are the variables, the constants, the coefficients, and what do they mean in your problem? So clearly, uh, there's many acceptable answers because you can make up any problem that you want. But is what you need is you need something that can change, an unknown value. You need two different variables here. All right, so, so you wouldn't say, I have two socks and three shirts and 10 pants because there would be no variables in there. But if you made X equal, um, how about um, the, how much it cost for a shirt and Y how much it cost for a pair of pants. And let's say you bought two pair of shirts then you could say uh, we buy two pair of shirts for X dollars and three pair of pants for Y dollars. And then we spend $10, that's a constant, so it doesn't depend on something. We don't need a variable there, don't have one, right? Then we spend $10 on some sunglasses. So then this would represent the total amount that you spent. So clearly that's one example, but you could do any number of examples. There's really an infinite number of situations you could come up with. Right, that could describe as long as you have something that involves two different variables, something that's changing. So notice I didn't say that the pants cost $5 because then I want to have a variable. Right. 